What's up guys, it's Alex, and today I'm sure you clicked on this video and thought what kind of black magic is he gonna tell us about that he can guarantee that we're gonna go out and catch a fish. Well, I can't guarantee you're gonna go out and catch a fish, but I can promise you if you use one of these four presentations, the chances of you catching a fish are gonna go way, way up, and you will not go home skunked, whether you're fishing from the bank, boat, kayak, it doesn't matter. I promise you tie on one of these four things and you're probably gonna get a bite. Now, I'm also doing a giveaway in today's video. You'll have a chance to win all four baits that I'm gonna talk about today. I will send you a pack of each one of them as well as the one that is not in a pack that's not a plastic that I'm gonna tell you about today. But the rules for that giveaway are somewhere in this video, so make sure that you watch the whole video so you can enter that giveaway to win all four of the baits I'm gonna talk about. Now, let's get right into today's video, and in no particular order, we're gonna start with the old shaky head. Now, for me, the shaky head is just an awesome tool because it is a tool that you can use in two foot of water or 25 foot of water. It doesn't really matter, but it always seems to get bites. It's just a super subtle finesse presentation that you can put in front of a fish's face, you can really soak it, you can really fish it slow, you can really, really saturate an area with it, and it tends to draw in the fish and get a bite. Now, one key thing with the shaky head is I like to use anywhere from about an eighth ounce to a 3 16th ounce head, and what really determines the size head that I'm using is the depth of water that I'm fishing in. Like I said, two to 25 foot of water, you can fish a shaky head. Obviously, a little bit shallower water, you're gonna use a lighter head. A little bit deeper water, you're gonna use a little bit heavier head. Now as for the bait that I pair up with it, I'm always pairing it up with a straight tail finesse worm. And really most of the time, I'm going with a straight black finesse worm. I feel like that that straight black finesse worm is just a good solid profile for those fish to key in on, whether it's in shallow water, deep water, clear water, uh, dirty water, it doesn't really matter. Just a good solid profile that those fish can key in on and they take advantage of it. Sometimes I'll mix in some green pumpkin. Moon juice is a color that Strike King makes that I really, really like, but I always tend to go back to that straight black finesse worm. Um, another thing that is cool that I like to mention is these Strike King worms have a little less salt content, so they'll actually stand up a little bit better. Um, I do still use the Zoom just trick worm black green pumpkin again. It's got a little bit higher salt content, so it tends to fall down a little bit more, but I found that both presentations seem to work in different situations. When the fish are really, really pressured, I found that those worms that are a little bit heavier salt content that just kind of lay on the bottom, you just drag them along the bottom will get more bites because it's almost like a do nothing presentation. Those worms just kind of lay there, you kind of drag a little bit there, it lays there, you drag a little bit and it just lays there, and those fish think it's a dying something. You know, it could be a dying bait fish, a dying crawdad, it doesn't really matter, and those fish will take advantage of it. But yeah, the old shaky head, can't really beat it. The next one is one that has been doing work for me, especially this year but it's been a bait that throughout my entire fishing life has been something that I can always bank on to get a bite, and that is the old stick bait. Whether it's wacky rigged or Texas rigged, the most important thing is that you're fishing it weightless. And fishing it weightless is really where this bait shines, and it's because with these stick worms, they're super heavy and salt, and they fall with that enticing shimmy. And there's a bunch of brands out there right now. I like using the Cinco, I like using the Ocho, and I've actually got another brand that I've kind of been experimenting with, and that is the Eggzone Lures Center Stick. And what's cool about the Center Stick is they actually show you where the true center point of the worm is, which kind of satisfies my OCD, but I also like the shimmy and the fall rate on that one. But it's hard to just beat the the old straight Cinco. And I, for me, again, I'm going straight black. It's a lot like the shaky head and the fact that I feel like that black just gives them a good solid profile. It helps to mimic all kinds of different stuff. It works in super clear water, super dirty water. It doesn't really matter. They can hone in on that black color and eat it. Now, like I said, the most important thing is that you're fishing it weightless so that you get that shimmy out of there, you get that slow rate of fall, because I really feel like the slow rate of fall and the shimmy of that bait are what are most important to catching the fish. That shimmy obviously hits their lateral line, it really lets them know where it's at in the water, and then once they actually see it, that slow, slow rate of fall really helps them to key in on that bait and know exactly where it's at, and then once they see it, to them, their brain, you know, they don't reason, a bass doesn't reason, 
but instinctually they think it's a dime bait fish, it's a dime minnow, it's a bug that's fell out of the tree or something, it's just kind of slowly floating down and they take advantage of it. And really guys, the wacky rig has been a killer tool for me. Um, if you've been around the channel for any amount of time, you have seen me fishing this wacky rig over the past couple months and catching some big fish. If you've not been around the channel for any amount of time, do me a favor right now, go hit that subscribe button down below, hit that little notification bell, I'll let you guys know when I put out all my videos just like this, whether it's an instructional video or a fishing video, go do that for me right now. But it has been a tool that has put some big fish into the kayak for me this year and really helped me to almost win a couple of tournaments that I fished in the kayak. Now the next one is something that has taken the fishing world by storm and really for me has kind of changed the way I look at how a bass eats certain baits and how small something can actually be to get a bass to eat it and that is the old Ned Rig. This thing is just a straight up fish catcher. Whether shallow water, deep water, clear water, dirty water, up north fishing for smallmouth, down south fishing for largemouth, you tie this little Ned Rig on and you seem to always get a bite. And it's just a great tool because of the Elastec plastic. So I feel like using the Z-Man products is really the way to go because of that Elastec plastic. That formula of the elastic number one it gives you that super durability so you can catch a thousand fish on this little uh, worm and never have to change it really guys you could keep the same worm on there almost all year if you wanted to and never have to change it it's only when you lose the heads that you have to change it or your hook point gets doled out that you have to change it but another thing about that plastic is the fact that it stands straight up and down just like that. So when you actually throw this thing in the water, that elastic plastic is super, super buoyant. And so it stands right up just like that. And I think a lot of the times what I like to do is just throw that bait out there and just kind of let it sit, just hop it a little bit, let it sit hop it a little bit, let it sit, and just when it sits there, you don't really have to impart any action upon the bait to get it to do something. It's the slightest little bit of current or water movement just kind of makes that thing very, very subtly move, just, just small movements. And I feel like with really, really pressured bass, that's how you gotta get a bite. I mean, you guys know, if you fish around pressured ponds, um, you know, pressured lakes, super clear water lakes, a lot of the times you just gotta be super, super subtle in how you present that bait to get them to bite and that's what this Ned Rig is, is just a super subtle small profile presentation that gets a ton of bites. Now one little secret I'll let you guys in on and it's something that I've observed around me is that when the crawdads molt you can throw the Ned Rig and get a ton of bites. So crawdads usually molt around the full moon and what happens is their shells get really really soft and some crawdads will actually lose their claws and when they lose their claws they start to look kind of just like that right there just a uh, kind of straight little bug looking thing. The only thing that they got going on is those little legs that stick off the side. And when you've got that presentation with no claws, nothing kind of in that defensive position, those fish will take advantage of those crawdads because they are so soft, they're really easy to consume, they have no way to defend themselves. And I mean, they just take that opportunity to go to Munchtown on these things. But the little Ned Rig is awesome. Now the next one is gonna be one that you guys are gonna probably be really surprised about and it's gonna be one that is more kind of a power fishing technique, but I feel like when you tie it on, I have a really, really good chance of catching a lot of fish. But before we get to that bait, let's talk about that giveaway that I mentioned at the beginning of the video. So all you gotta do is obviously be subscribed to my channel. Please go do that if you haven't. Hit that little notification bell. Like I said, I'll let you guys know when I put out all of my videos, but be subscribed to my channel, like this video, and comment your go-to bait. What is your bait that you always tie on when you need a buy and you feel like that you're almost guaranteed that you'll go out and catch a fish. So super simple again, subscribe, like, comment, and you guys will be entered for the giveaway for all four baits that I've talked about in today's video. But let's talk about number four, and that is the swim jig. The swim jig is really just the ultimate tool for covering a lot of water, being a super subtle presentation, mimicking all kinds of forage depending on what color you choose, you're able to skip it, you're able to pitch it, you're able to fish it like a normal jig. You can do all kinds of different things with it, but the swim jig is just an awesome presentation. The reason I like the swim jig is because it is super subtle. It's not like a spinnerbait or a bladed jig that puts off a vibration. 
you just simply throw it out there and reel it back. And for a long time, it, it kind of took me a while to rewire my brain the fact that just because I can't feel it doesn't mean that it's actually not or that it's not actually doing something and so when i kind of finally got it in my brain that hey i can throw this thing out there and reel it back and it's still doing something to attract a fish is when i started getting a ton of bites and i will throw this on super pressure bodies of water super clear bodies of water i throw it around wood and stuff that we're on you know a lake that is not as pressured you get a bite on something like a bladed jig or a spinner bait and I'll get bites and I'll also throw it in water temperatures anything above 75 degrees. When it seems like that chatterbait and that spinnerbait bite start to die, tie on the bladed jig and just reel it around really slow. Throw it out there, kind of hop it and reel it. Make it look like a dying bait fish, a wounded bait fish, a fleeing bait fish, and you're gonna get some bites. Now one thing that I do is I pair it up with that menace grub by strike king i love that little menace grub because those tails on there aren't as violent as say like the rage crawl or the space monkey or something like that now if you've been around the channel you guys know i actually pair up one swim jig with the space monkey but that's more when i'm kind of really power fishing i don't swim that one as much i'm more hopping and swim it um, i pitch it around really heavy cover when i'm looking for big river bass um, but when I'm looking for those more finesse fish, I'm going to pair it up with that little menace. And one thing that I always do is I rig it vertically, not horizontally, so that the tails are in line with the hook point. I feel like that I get a better kick out of that. And one thing that I've noticed is that that top tail or that top crawl actually kind of has almost like a limp to it. And if you guys will rig up a menace vertically on a swim jig chatterbait, you guys will notice that as well. The bottom one will be kicking really, really hard and that top one almost kind of wants to limp. And I think that kind of limp that it has gives the presentation or gives the kind of feel to a bass's lateral line that this is an injured bait fish, it's an injured bluegill, it's an injured something and they can take advantage of that injured thing. And for me guys, the swim jig on lakes around me that are super pressured, that have clear water, that I just tend to not get a ton of bites on, I can tie on that swim jig and I can put some fish into the boat. But yeah, that is my four baits that I feel like if I have tied on, I'm almost guaranteed to put a fish into the boat. Obviously, you gotta have the fairy wand for three of them, eh. um, but you can get the big stick out on the swim jig and lay the wood to them. But make sure that you followed all the rules to enter the giveaway so that you guys will have a chance to win all four of the baits that I talked about. What I'll do is I'll send you a pack of trick worms, finesse worms, I'll send you a pack of Cinco's, I'll send you a pack of Ned Rigs, and I'll send you the swim jig that I like to use the most. And you guys can go out and actually test what I just told you in today's video out for yourself. But as always, you guys are sweet, and thank you for watching.